Well, normally this is the time that I would be uh, unprepping my car from a track day. I'd be uh, putting factory pads back in or putting all the crap that I normally keep in the car back in the trunk or whatever it might be. But uh, this video is a little bit different. Uh, as you saw in the intro, uh, I ended up hitting the wall at Road America in the kink. Uh, made some mistakes, went in too fast, didn't scrub enough speed, uh, missed the apex, lots of things happened. Uh, tried to do my best to keep it off of the other wall from a head-on collision, ended up spinning it around and uh, took a hit to the rear right. Uh, the reason I'm making this video is because I wanted to let everybody know my experience with Haggerty Track Day Insurance and how that went. Um, and, and maybe some things to, to keep in mind when you buy track insurance, if you have to use it like I did. Uh, just a couple of basic things. So here we go. Uh, track Day Insurance, really easy to buy. You go to Haggerty's website, search Track Day Insurance, uh, fill out your vehicle information, your VIN, your personal information, and uh, where you're gonna be racing or, or uh, you know, doing a driver's event at, uh, if you're gonna do a time, at uh, time attack or time trial event or not. Um, and then you uh, list some things about the car uh, and you come to an agreed upon value. And then they give you your estimated cost. You pay for it and you're set. Uh, typically they cover you for two to three days depending on the location. Um, in my case, it was a two day event that was covered for at Road America. Uh, the, sadly enough, I ended up having to use the track day insurance. So I kind of walk you through some of the scenarios that I went through, um, some of the uncertainties that I had while I was dealing with the track day insurance um, and ultimately the end result, uh, which they did cover the car, they covered all the damage, there was no, no question on that. So when I first uh, got into my uh, accident at Road America, um, you know, I got checked out at the facility and things like that. And uh, after I was back into the paddock uh, garages, I decided to call the number uh, to RLI. So for those that don't know, RLI is the underwriter for Haggerty Track Day Insurance. The thing to keep in mind, uh, and this made me a little nervous, is that RLI is not open on the weekends and a lot of track events happen on the weekend. So I was uh, patched through to their after hour support uh, to which that person did his best to try to help me out but didn't have access to my policy at that time. At one point asked me what make and model my boat was and I told him that I wasn't driving a Challenger. Uh, so I, you know, it was a little uneasy at first because I wasn't sure what was going to happen. Uh, and then just out of circumstance, it ended up that uh, the person who was assigned to my claim was off the following Monday. So I didn't hear anything until Tuesday uh, following my accident. And my accident happened Saturday morning and that's when I called. Um, so once I did hear from them, it was actually a pretty good experience. Uh, Zach was the guy who was helping me out. He reassured me that uh, he was gonna handle as much as he could. Um, I ended up leaving the car at Road America. I didn't have it towed anywhere. Uh, I don't have a trailer, so I couldn't tow it myself. Um, and that's actually a good thing because it saved me from spending money on having to have it towed somewhere just for them to tell me that um, the car ended up being totaled anyway. So there was really no need to have it towed anywhere. Um, so my first suggestion is leave the car where it's at. Now, if you have your own trailer, you can absolutely bring it to where, you know, bring it home or, or whatever you're going to take it to. Um, but in my case, I didn't have my own trailer. I actually drove the car down to Road America. And, uh, after my accident, I left it at Road America. Uh, Haggerty or RLI ended up sending an appraiser out to Road America to go take a look at my vehicle. And that's when they determined that uh, the damage to the car 
was greater than the worth of having it fixed. So uh, they ended up totaling out the car. It was uh, $21,000 worth of damage, um, which it's crazy to think that uh, that impact to the rear quarter panel of the car did $21,000 in damage, but I guess it all adds up. Um, parts and labor and things like that. So um, once they determined that they were gonna uh, toll it out, I, I ended up having to sign a bunch of uh, power of attorney documents and send my title to, uh, to them. And the reason for the power of attorney documents is that I wouldn't be present to sign my title away. Nobody had, uh, um, you know, nobody would be there to witness me signing the title. It wasn't your typical transaction with the title. So you send the title, you uh, sign some power of attorney documents. I had to have them notarized and, um, and they informed me that they would take care of the rest. So uh, the car was salvaged. It was towed to a um, auction site somewhere in Wisconsin, I'm not sure, but uh, I essentially didn't have to do anything other than fill out some papers and send my title into uh, Haggerty or RLI. Uh, which made the process really easy. Uh, it still saddens me. Uh, it definitely took a hit to my ego. Um, I love that car, so it's hard for me to not have it here. So not having the car here has been made a little difficult. Uh, the plans, future plans, uh, are gonna take some time off for 2020. Uh, I still have my daily driver. The, the Camaro was a track car, it was a, it was a toy, it was a fun car. So we'll probably focus on something in the spring of 2021 and see where that takes us. Maybe it'll be another Camaro, maybe a Mustang. Uh, I don't know, maybe a Corvette, if I can convince my wife that uh, it's a good investment. But uh, either way, um, I'm sure I'm missing a lot of things to cover. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and uh, I'll be happy to answer them uh, as quick as I can for you. Thanks everyone. See ya.